From KRQE News 13, your local election headquarters, this is a 2018 Senate debate. The balance of power on Capitol Hill is at stake in this midterm election, and New Mexico will have a say in the outcome. One of the races that will shape the balance of power is our Senate race. Three candidates from three parties after a late entry into the race. And I think that's really the excitement about this and maybe making it a little bit more interesting than it would be otherwise. As we head down the final stretch toward Election Day, it's the last 2018 New Mexico Senate debate of the campaign. And it's coming to you from KRQE News 13, your local election headquarters. We are bringing this debate to you live from the KRQE studio in downtown Albuquerque. I'm News 13 anchor Jessica Gadete, your moderator for the evening. Let's meet the candidates quickly. To your left, we have Republican Mick Rich, Democrat Martin Heinrich in the middle, and to your right, Libertarian Gary Johnson. Before we start, the ground rules. There are very few. I'll ask the questions. There are no time limits, but we are encouraging the candidates to stay on point. The candidates are free to comment on opponents' views or even interject. I will step in to guide the conversation and to keep the topics flowing. Each candidate will also have a minute and a half for closing statements. Let's talk about something happening right now. We've all seen the video of the migrant caravan, thousands of people marching up from Honduras through Mexico toward the U.S. border. In a tweet this week, the president said, quote, criminals and unknown Middle Easterners are mixed in. I have alerted border patrol and military that this is a national emergency. Now that brings us to our question. What should happen when those immigrants reach our southern border? By virtue of a coin toss, we start with Mr. Rich. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Appreciate the opportunity and I'm running for the United States Senate because I care about New Mexico. Tonight you're going to see three different visions for New Mexico. My vision is about putting New Mexico first. It's about good paying jobs, great opportunities, education and safe communities. And Mr. Martin Rich, Heinrich's gonna... vision is what Washington is... vision and that is putting and Mr. He Rich, we will have Mexico. plenty of time to discuss plenty all the time. issues, but plenty we want to stick to the questions. So okay. what should happen to those immigrants when they reach our southern border? Well, for, I have always believed, I have always believed that we need to secure our southern border, plain and simple. Whether it's a wall, whether it's a wall, whether it's barriers, whether it's more personnel. But I was down on the border a year and a half ago. I met with more... Murray, Judy, we were down there. They talked about the drug runners coming through their rangeland, crossing. They had a chihuahua in their home. So when the drug runners came through, they rattled their doors and windows to check to see if they were home. They would know in the middle of the night. This is, oh, we have open borders. We need to secure our borders. And I tell you what, what we have right now is an immigration. This is not just immigration. This is immigration the way it's not supposed to be done. Okay, Senator Heinrich, what would you do, what do you think we should do when those immigrants reach our southern border? Well, actually, Jessica, they're not immigrants, they're refugees. And hungry five-year-old refugees do not constitute a security threat to the United States. Uh, we have the infrastructure in place uh, to make sure as they come to the border, if they ask for asylum, they can be processed. We separate the criminals, if there are any, the terrorists, if there actually are any, there's no evidence to suggest that at this point uh, from those who are legitimately seeking asylum. We have the infrastructure to deal with this. Those folks are a thousand miles from our border. The only reason we're talking about this right now is because the President of the United States thinks this is somehow a winning midterm election message. Uh, building a wall along our southern border is a third century solution to a 21st century problem. I think we can do a lot better than that. I think we can pass comprehensive immigration reform that takes care of, uh, of dreamers and people whose only crime is Martin their immigration Heinrich, status. You've been in we Washington. can do a whole lot better go than building first, a wall. Nick. Come on, you had your chance. Governor Johnson. I think this is political kabuki, to really tell you the truth. This is much to do about nothing. We've got thousands of refugees from the border. Last time this happened, I believe about 200 ended up being at the border. 
We have two million crossings a day, legal crossings across the border a day, so this is not an assault uh, on America. And you know what? We do need comprehensive immigration reform. We should make it as easy as possible for somebody that wants to come into this country to work, to be able to get a work visa. A work visa should entail a background check and a social security card. The taxes get paid. Let's not build a wall across the border. If we do that, at some point, we're going to tear down that wall for what it represents. And that's not to say that we shouldn't have border security. We don't want drugs coming across the border. We don't want truckloads of convicts coming across the border. But that's really not uh, happening. And where's the humanity? The United States of America, we're a country of immigrants. Let's show some humanity here. There may be this those whose Johnson, lives since you, are since truly you brought up the border wall, let's talk about but, that. But, right, but what we're talking about here is immigrants coming to our country. These are people that are amassing to charge our border. To these crash are, these our are border. hungry. Our border. This is a mess. This is, this is a mess. And the only border. way to control it these are is right now. This is no. These are individuals America that are coming from Central America for economic issues, and this Mr. is Rich, not well, how do, right. How do you plan to do that? And one number one, we need to make sure that our borders are secure. Whether it's a wall, whether it but is. But dealing with these immigrants that are coming. How do you know we what? Handle this it? is a mess, and this isn't right. And they are being supported by Central American countries, the individuals in Central America. They're not just coming here. We don't know who they are. It's not just about five-year-olds. It sounds great about five-year-olds, but we don't actually know who's coming. We do have and a they process keep marching. In place for They're marching with these to our borders to overwhelm our border security. They're not and this isn't right. Our border security. We need border security to ensure that the people that come here, come here legally. They don't come through our open borders. They come through our border crossings. And right now, without the border security that Jessica, we have, we, we they're not have coming a, through our border Heinrich. crossings. We don't have an open border. We will never have an open border. But we certainly have the infrastructure in place to separate criminals and terrorists from five-year-old hungry kids fleeing from violence. And the fact that neither Mr. Rich nor the President can differentiate between the two is, I think, more a reflection on their judgment than on what's going on a thousand miles south of our border. And if I may comment on the wall, um, look, when you go to New Hampshire to run for president, the first thing they tell you in New Hampshire is, are you going to build a wall across the border? And if not, what's the matter with you? You go to Iowa, they say the same thing. And I am talking about Republicans now, having run for president as a Republican in 2012. My response was, look, let's not build a wall across the border. This is so overblown, it's really not an issue. And gosh, uh, after we build the wall across the border with Mexico, then we should build a wall across New Hampshire and Canada's border? To which the response was, well, that's not a problem. What's the matter with you? Well, come on, I'm a border. I've been a border governor. This is not a problem. This is something made up. This okay. is a problem, and I need to make it clear that heroin, methamphetamines, and fentanyl is coming across our Mexican border. 90% of the heroin comes from the southern border. We are having citizens dying of heroin overdoses, and, and this is and not gentlemen, okay. And gentlemen, I guess people this die is, from heroin overdoses every year. This is you the, want, I've Rich gone was, to one too many funerals with for young Bannon, people dying a, a, of a, a, heroin gentlemen, I'm overdoses, gonna interrupt you there. and this is gentlemen, not okay. Okay, I think we've all, all you've, uh, everyone has gotten their point across, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the deficit. Let's turn now to the budget deficit. Last year, it hit $779 billion. Tough decisions are coming. Now, right now, we're going to do something a little differently. I want you to raise your hand, gentlemen. I want you to raise your hand if you think we should raise taxes to fix our budget. No one? I think we should reverse some of the tax cuts that gave enormous benefits. Okay, to Senator Heinrich, we'll start with you. Uh, how should we fix our budget? I think it's going to take sustained effort. Uh, if you look back at the Obama administration, for seven of those eight years, the deficit went down. It included cuts to programs. It included increases in revenues. We have an enormous deficit because we've had three rounds of unpaid for tax cuts, two wars that were unpaid for, and a huge social program under George W. Bush that was also unpaid for. Some of my colleagues want to pay for this deficit by telling people they have to work longer before they can retire, or by cutting back on Medicare and Medicaid. 
That's not how we should you fix want, this deficit. I agree. <laughs> we have a spending problem. But Warren Heinrich was in Washington when he passed you know, the bailout for the automobile manufacturers. He was in Washington when he signed to bail out the banks. He's there bailing out... Uh, now Actually, it's I health, it's health insurance there. companies I that you're bailing out. You were, were in out. Washington no. as a congressman. Martin Heinrich, we have a spending problem. And we and you okay, want to take back right? our well, tax? Well, what would you cut? How do how would you fix the budget? What would well, you? Well, first of all, we need to put together a bipartisan committee, just like we do for base realignment. They Can come together. Specifics? They come together and decide what programs need to come to an end. I'll this has specifics. to do with like prime example is Department of Education. Education is not the federal government's responsibility, and that is one of the departments we can dramatically cut. Yeah, the nice. other one is su different subsidies. Nibbling, nibbling. Governor Johnson. I, I got one message uh, to say when it comes to the federal deficit and debt. That is, it's the biggest issue facing this country, and young people are getting screwed. Young people are getting screwed. My pledge is, if elected to the U.S. Senate, I hope to be on the Senate Budget Committee. Regardless of that, I'm going to submit a balanced budget to Congress. And if you're going to submit a balanced budget to Congress, you've got to take on the biggies, and that's reform of Medicaid and Medicare. Social Security has to be reformed if it's going to be around for the future, and that's also military spending. Notice I didn't say defense spending, because it's anything but defense these days. Constitutionally, we are to defend ourselves against foreign aggression. I'm going to argue that our military interventions are anything but that, that we are the world's policemen, and let's pull back. So, Jessica, when you hear Social Security reform, I think it's important to, to understand that that typically means cutting benefits. It means telling people Not cutting who've benefits. worked no, it their may be entire adding, lives adding that they're going to have to wait longer pay, to retire. Pay more. I Raise think it's ironic age. that the governor it's irresponsible of New Mexico to say took his that you're not going to reform Social Security. And Young people, you're people getting that screwed. Other folks you're have getting to work till they're 70 or 75. Hey, Jessica, I just want to make it clear as I listened to uh, Gary Johnson say he's going to submit a balanced budget. What he doesn't realize is Senate doesn't pr submit a budget. That's, That's the right. president's That's job right. responsibility and to submit the budget. Does, Mark, does Gary Johnson even know what office he's running in? He had a backroom <laughs> deal with Aubrey Dunn to get on this on this campaign, God, and the question is, and I, I really question for eight about years, that. Years, Mick. And I really you do want, understand and you this want, process. And, and right let's now, let's talk about that, Mr. What? Rich. Let's talk about that. There, this is unusual. We have three candidates sitting here. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you jumped into the race rather late. Uh, Mr. Rich. Uh, were there any any groups asking you to step down when he jumped in? Oh God, yes. And they came about? out of the woodwork and they asked me to jump out and get out of the out of the budget my, or out of the race. And my clear my thing was no backroom deals to get Gary Johnson in this race was going to get me to back out. Gary Johnson only had eight people to show up in the state to get him on the ballot. That's not what this is about this is old time politics this is and this gift, isn't is right this is. and i tell you what US and 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 i had John close to a thousand times more people vote to get me on the ballot than gary johnson and, and if Rich, anybody should have gotten off the ballot it was gary were you disappointed in, in the lack of funding though that your party has put towards your campaign we're going to make it work with what we have i never i am not surprised i am i am not a politician I'm a businessman and I've been building the communities in New Mexico for 35 years. I'm not one of the party boys and that's very clear. That's why I am the true independent, in Republican independent in this race. And Mr. I am nobody's guy. I am the voters person. I will be your advocate in Washington and, Mr. Rich, and nobody else's. There. Mr. Johnson, when you jumped into this race, uh, split the vote. Are you essentially making this a lot easier for Mr. Heinrich to win this race. Well, there was no chance that Mr. Rich was going to win the race. I'm not doing any harm to anybody other than arguably Martin if he's not re-elected and he doesn't have a job. Uh, but the things that I am saying are not being said in Washington, D.C. The things that I'm saying, everybody's got their heads in the sand over, which is the debt and the deficit, and the fact that this year we're going to spend 
$480 billion for interest only on the debt. If I may put that into perspective, $550 billion for Medicaid, $550 billion for Medicare. Uh, in five years, if interest rates go up a percent and a half, uh, with trillion dollar, uh, trillion dollar deficit spending for the next five years, it's possible we could be spending in five years one trillion dollars on interest only on the debt. Young people, you are getting screwed. This is short term thinking for older people. Let's have a long term I outlook on the United States and the opportunity Jessica. that it can but present this is, to young people. This is very like to this yeah, I'm going to jump in here for just let's, a minute let's and, let Senator and mention respond. the fact that both of my opponents uh, just supported a $2 trillion tax cut. A $2 trillion tax cut that didn't create higher wages for the people of New Mexico, that largely went to Wall Street to finance stock buybacks. And now they're going to lecture us on fiscal responsibility. I, I think first that of is all, I need to make all, one thing: is Gary reduction. Johnson made it very clear just now that he's not running to be New Mexico's U.S. senator. He's running I'm to running advance to his. Ad, he is running to advance, advance his agenda, agenda that, helps young people. that who he My believes in. He's running to, to be the people. libertarian young candidate. People, and I'm going to and interrupt so now. While we're talking about leave. young people getting He's screwed, to as the, the governor said, finish up your thoughts and we'll Let's move talk on. about climate change for a change. I, I've hardly Let's, heard we're it. Actually, on, we're going to stick on. We're going to stick on topic. So we're going to get to climate change later. We'll see if that comes up later on. Yeah. So once again, young people, stay on topic. Pay attention. But Turning what now talk, but what to Supreme talk, Court, Mr. Rich, we're going to move on to the next question. Turning to Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh, his confirmation hearings turned into a spectacle that kept Americans riveted. Now the controversy has become campaign fodder. What happened to him was so unfair, I've never seen anything like it. And we stuck with him all the way, because we knew the facts. We stuck with him all the way. It has sparked wide debate about how to address serious old allegations that surface and about holding decades old behavior like drinking against a Supreme Court nominee. During the hearings, Mr. Rich was quoted in the New Mexico Political Report as saying he would like to see Martin Heinrich go to a high school and tell students, if you went to a party and behaved inappropriately, you have no future. I think we all can agree tonight that it's, if a serious crimes are proven against a Supreme Court nominee, including sexual assault, then the candidate should be disqualified. But what about immature teenage or college behavior? Should that weigh in on a nominee's job prospects? And we'll start with Governor Johnson. Well, no, it shouldn't. And if you want to, if you want to uh, talk about a topic that has really unfairly affected tens of millions of Americans. It's the criminalization of marijuana and, and the fact that we do have tens of millions of Americans who are convicted felons because of our drug laws that otherwise would be tax-paying, law-abiding citizens. And as young people, we do stupid things, uh, but stupid is one thing, uh, criminal activity is another, and if it's proven criminal activity, look, there's no escaping criminal uh, activity, criminal conduct. Mr. Rich. I just this week addressed 175 high school students in their government class. We talked about running for what it means to run for the U.S. Senate, what I intend to do. These are great people. But what we talked about there is what goes on in the high school a little bit. I have four children, three daughters, one son. You know, these things, you know, it is a matter of how far you go back to hold somebody accountable. And we're not talking. What my daughter once said to me, she said, "A loser isn't somebody with no, with a past. It's someone with no future." We need to make sure that we give our young people a bright future, and it means that at some point we said, "You got a clean slate." The legalized the legal system allows for that. Now, what what took place in Washington with Judge Kavanaugh, and the back and forth and the screaming and the, we need a senator in Washington that's going to reach across the aisle with the same voice Just that's willing to reach to out and talk to one another and that's okay. what's lacking and not only is it happening in Congress in the Senate but look what and happened they just arrested the bomber and we need to Mr. scale Rich, this back 
We need to understand and we've got your point that across. the political now let's go to party are our Heinrich. enemy. Well, let's go back to the question and what Mr. Rich actually said. He said that I should go to a high school and tell high school students that if they do something inappropriate at a party, that um, I should tell them that their future is gone. Um, sexual assault is not something that's just inappropriate. Sexual assault is a crime. And I think it's important that we begin to realize that we should start at a place where we actually take survivors at their word, where we take them seriously, where we don't mock them at political rallies because of the message that that sends uh, to survivors, whether they were accosted 30 years ago or whether they were accosted last week. Okay. I don't see Senator Heinrich calling out for the co-chairman of the Democratic party resign over the allegations against him. Jessica, and this is I right. held my own colleague in the United States Senate to a higher standard and asked for Senator Al Franken to step down. Okay, and with that, we'll move on. Let's jump to a top concern for New Mexicans, especially here in the Albuquerque area, the crime problem. But before we attack that question, it seems just about everybody in New Mexico has a crime story. So I want to ask you, have you ever been a victim of crime in New Mexico? And if so, briefly tell us about it. And we're going to start with Mr. Rich. I've been a business owner for 35 years working in the state. And of course, I've run across those situations. We've had a few vehicles stolen. And in fact, I was able to recover one of them. Single-handedly was able to get them to pull over to the side and walk away. But my, son, my daughter just recently She's a second year med student at UNM. She's getting gas and there was a couple sketchy characters in the parking lot. A couple came up to them and handed my daughter a can of mace and said, we're from out of town and when we, we bought this when we came to Albuquerque because we know what Albuquerque's like. And now we're leaving for home and we want to give this to you because you need it. How do we expect to keep our doctors here, and employers here, with the crime that we have. We and gotta we'll get be, it we'll under control. We'll be addressing control. that in a second. Mr. Heinrich, have you been a victim of crime in New Mexico? I, I have. Um, our home was broken into a few years ago. Uh, they took whatever they felt was valuable. Um, uh, a, a lot of family heirloom, heirlooms, um, including uh, one of our, our wedding rings. Um, it's, it's a problem. And I, my neighbor actually had a home invasion. So I'm very familiar with this. We've been through this before. We've been through the, the crime uh, spree of the mid-90s. And I think we have very proven solutions uh, because 10 years ago we didn't have this problem in Albuquerque. And I think we need to go back to those solutions. Okay. Mr. Johnson, have you been a victim of crime uh, in New Mexico? I have been. I've had my home broken into a couple of times, things stolen. My first car, Austin Healey Sprite. I got mm. the top stolen off the Austin Healey Sprite and I actually found the top, I found the culprit, um, I let him go, right or wrong, after I was able to deliver a severe tongue lashing uh, to that individual. Look, as a U.S. Senator, um, there are funds available to help uh, New Mexico communities, Albuquerque, if they need, if it's an issue of funds, uh, those funds are available, and as a U.S. Senator, there's nobody here at this okay. table that's not going to step up and make that happen. Okay, along those lines, according to CBS News, almost half of all New Mexicans own a gun. The seventh highest rate in the country. And all three candidates here tonight have made it known they are gun owners as well. Earlier this month, on the one-year anniversary of the country's deadliest shooting spree, the mass shooting at a Las Vegas country music concert, President Trump was quoted as saying, we're knocking out bump stocks. We're in the final two or three weeks and I'll be able to ride out bump stocks. Of course, bump stocks are a device that can increase the firing rate on a semi-automatic weapon. My question tonight, do we need a ban on bump stocks or assault rifles? And we'll start with Senator Heinrich. Well, I, um, let's start with the fact that as, as a gun owner, I think we have a special um, responsibility as gun owners to step up and be part of the solution and I think there are many things that we can do. Uh, I actually co-sponsored legislation with Senator Jeff Flake of Arizona, the only bipartisan legislation to prohibit bump stocks. There is no, none, no legitimate use for that item. 
As a gun owner, I can tell you there is no reason any of us need to own a bump stock. So yes, we can step up and, and deal with this epidemic of mass shootings in this country, including here in New Mexico at places like Aztec, uh, where we had a mass shooter at the high school. Um, we Senator need to Heinrich, do something about that. What about that. assault rifles? I think we should ban assault rifles, but we should do it in a way that is uh, based on their form and their function, not on their cosmetics. And I think that in the past, uh, that sort of legislation has not always been well crafted. And once again, I think it's important for gun owners to be part of the process of crafting that legislation. And that's what I will do. Senator Heinrich, did your bill get written into law, signed into law? Uh, I don't think any, any reasonable uh, gun li limitation in this Congress is going to get past Mitch McConnell and the Republicans in Congress. So the which answer is, exactly is no. Why and it means you shouldn't that send Mick Rich you had to no Washington D.C. signed into because law. What he's going to do is carry water for the been NRA. in Washington I don't as a think senator. That's what Mr. We need. Rich, would you do you want a ban on bump stocks or uh, assault rifles? I think the way to approach it is. I believe that I'm not asking people, and I'm not putting forward that we need to ban assault rifles. What I am saying is we need to eliminate any possibility for assault weapons to become fully automatic, whatever system it takes. I went back and I looked, talked to people about bump stocks. They said, issue about bump stocks is it, you're unable to point, to able to point that weapon in a target and keep it on it. It moves around a lot. So, but again, it didn't stop anything, a whole lot of people but from dying anyway, in Las what Vegas. What I believe is that any Next. system that puts in place to make a weapon fully Tens automatic is not acceptable to me. Dozens Governor Johnson, let's give you an opportunity to answer yeah. this bump question. Stocks. Should we ban bump stocks? Uh, well, for starters, let's talk about assault rifles. Um, automatic rifles are banned. Automatic weapons are banned. Um, and so assault rifles are in the category of semi-automatic rifles, of which there are 50 million of them in this country. So if you ban semi-automatic rifles, you're talking about 50 million people that would have to hand in their rifles. I'm going to suggest that maybe half of them do, half of them don't, and now you're going to create an entirely new category of felon that's going to involve your friends, family, and coworkers in that category of felon. With regard to bump stocks, right now um, you can you can rig and and I saw this uh, I saw this on the news uh, that you can rig a rubber band to accomplish the same thing uh, as a bump stock. So, is eliminating bump stocks going to alleviate the problem when a rubber band can Jessica, be substituted in what place? What you're hearing here is no from both of my colleagues, that they will not well, do anything that it's, that it, to put a it limit It sounds great to put a limit on it, but, it, but it, will it actually accomplish anything? Country. Or will let's it create felons for those that no, own bump stocks that let's have a little common somehow sense. have some fun I, using I don't I, But I think the other point here, Jessica, is the fact that... I'm going to stop you here. We're staying on this topic, and we're going to move on to the next question. Three years ago, a violent ex-con was charged in the shooting and killing of Albuquerque police officer Daniel Webster. He bought the gun from a local couple who posted a sale, a for sale ad online. They sold it to him on the street. No background check required. Should the federal government require background checks on private sales to help keep guns out of the hands of criminals? And we'll start with you, Governor Johnson. Well, uh Private sales, uh, whether that's an expansion or not, uh, background checks, I, I think, are essential. Look, we should be open to a debate and a discussion on how we keep guns out of the hands of the mentally ill, how we keep guns out of the hands of potential uh, felons. But, but it brings up a broader issue. The devil is in the details, and what you end up doing when you talk about a private sale from one individual to another or the transfer of weapons from one individual to another is you're talking about now family members that want to and, and there's an exclusion for family members but only direct family members this gets very complicated but bottom line you create an entirely new class of felons because the devil's in the details and when you start talking about transfer of weapons that's a whole category of you may be transferring your weapon to a very good friend, and now that is a, uh, a, 
against the law, it, it's a felony. All right, Mr. Rich. We need comprehensive background checks, plain and simple. I understand what, what we're talking about here. Including it's, on private sales? Even on, I tell you what, I'm afraid so. That's where we're at today with what we've seen. Uh, there's different ways to do it. We do, when we transfer title for an automobile, we go through the same process. We go through a process for that. We can do it with our weapons as well. Senator Heinrich. This isn't complicated. Um, if, uh, if it's a direct family member, if it's your son, you should be able to pass down a fairly family heirloom. Otherwise, you go to a federally licensed firearm dealer. You do the background check there, and then you can make your sale. This is not complicated, and it doesn't create a whole new class of felons. The only reason this hasn't happened yet is because the NRA has been so dead set against it. Uh, this is a, another case of where we can't do anything uh, with regard to common sense changes to our gun laws. Okay, and with that, we're going to move on to health care. As President Trump and Republicans in Congress look to dismantle Obamacare, there's a hot debate in Senate races all over the country over stripping away protections for people with pre-existing conditions to bring health care costs down. President Trump insists he'd never let this happen. While just this week, former President Barack Obama made a campaign appearance in Nevada and used the issue as a rallying cry for Democrats. I can tell you that that they have no way of protecting pre-existing conditions with anything they've proposed. They're just saying it. They're just making it up. Do you believe any overhaul of the Affordable Care Act should include strong protections for people with pre-existing conditions? We start with Mr. Rich. The answer is yes. My family when my wife was pregnant with our youngest daughter, we lost our health insurance and we ended up with a pre-existing condition. It became a complicated pregnancy and we almost looked at financial ruin. So we need to ensure that we have pre-existing conditions covered. New Mexico has the health insurance pool that does cover pre-existing conditions. That exists today and that needs to continue. But right now, the Obamacare Martin Heinrich voted for Obamacare that forced through, it raised our rates, we lost our doctors, and it's a mess today. We need affordable, Jessica. accessible health care. And how do you do that? What, affordable, how do we, accessible? How are we, we going to change We that? need to allow individuals to purchase health plans that work for them, not, not for the federal government. Allow individuals to buy health coverage across state lines, just like we do for auto insurance. These are the things that we can do. In pre-existing conditions, and Mr. We Rich, have how does an that bring insurance costs pool. Down, though? What? How will that bring costs down for health care? Oh, it'll tell you what, it'll, it'll, I get, it'll, it'll, I get to buy coverage plans. that works for me. Right now, we paid, I think, $1,000 for my daughter's health insurance. When she's going to school, she got sick, and it was a $3,000 out of pocket expense. It's not working what we have today. We need to allow people to buy coverage that works for them. Young people don't can have a high deductible and have, uh, you know, for catastrophic injury, you know, care. Okay, Senator Heinrich. Uh, well, repeal and replace is simply a scam. I mean, it's something that the Republican Party sold as a line in a speech. But when it came to actually implement it, they couldn't agree on what replace was. They certainly didn't have any legal, legal language to protect pre-existing conditions. So what they voted on again and again and again was simply replace straight up, which would have eliminated protections for pre-existing conditions. We would go back to the days in New Mexico where you could be denied insurance simply because you had diabetes or a heart condition. And if you did this across state borders thing, all it would do is create junk plans where the, the states with the lowest uh, requirements would have plans that were effectively meaningless. Governor Johnson. Young people, do you feel screwed that you're having to pay health insurance? Uh, you're healthy for a lot of people that aren't healthy? Uh, I've always said that uh, we could uh, carve out those with pre-existing conditions. I think that that could be something that would be done. But what's really needed, and there, this voice doesn't exist in the U.S. Senate, is we really need a free market approach to health care. 
And in a free market health approach to health care, I reject the insurance model. We would have insurance to cover ourselves for catastrophic injury and illness, but we would pay as you go in a system that would be incredibly affordable on a cash basis. The government could establish health savings accounts that you could pay for your ongoing medical need out of cash uh, savings accounts. Look, we would have gallbladders are us if we had a free market approach to healthcare. We would have clinics that would specialize in gallbladder surgery at thousands of dollars as opposed to tens of thousands of dollars. And you can extrapolate that to x-rays are us, but uh, Jessica, what, what, radiologists what right, are us. Let's buy insurance across state affordable, lines. Accessible. Affordable healthcare. healthcare. The only problem with the Affordable Healthcare let, let, Act is that it's not affordable and it doesn't cover anything. Let's just hope I was there in are the us audience with my daughter when Senator Heinrich, when he was a congressman, said to all of us in the audience, "If you die, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Your rates are going to go down. You're going to keep your health plan." Martin, that's I'm on my second you health plan. Was, you would protect I was Toys on my us. second health plan. Toys I was. They, they my rates out went out up, and I'm on my third doctor. It's not anything. It's very difficult to put a lot of business. All three of you are talking successful. for anyone to understand. Mr. Heinrich, would you like to respond? Uh, when we passed the ACA, it changed the situation in this state where previously people were being denied for coverage because they had diabetes, because they had a heart condition. We fixed that. That is in law today, and it'll be in law unless this president can change it. We also brought down the uninsured rate in this state dramatically, from about 18% to about 9%. There is still work to do. And we stabilized our rural hospitals and clinics through the expansion of Medicaid. And if you repeal the ACA, what it will do is it will destroy that progress. And it will, by replacing uh, Medicaid expansion, it will put at risk rural hospitals and clinics all across this We're state. not talking about eliminating Medicaid. And when you passed the ACA, you ended up taking funding that was sent directly to our rural hospitals. And now they're struggling because of funding that's not there, that was there before ACA. It's been a challenge. It's still a challenge. And since ACA has been enacted, our rates for our company and all our staff has gone up year after year and the only time it hasn't been been over double digit is when Donald Trump has been in, pr in office. And with that we're going to move on to the next question. The last time Congress raised the minimum wage, which is 725, was in 2009. According to the National Conference of State Legislatures, that's lower than 29 states, including New Mexico, which is 750 an hour. Is it time to raise the minimum wage federally again? And if so, to what? And we're going to start with Mr. Heinrich. Absolutely. It's long past time to raise the min minimum wage. I raised the minimum wage in Albuquerque to $7.50 when I was on the city council well over 10 years ago. So the fact that the minimum wage has not kept up is purely a result of Republicans in control of the Congress. We need to raise the minimum wage. We need to make sure that anyone who works full time in this country should not have to live in poverty. What would and you we, raise it to? I think we should raise it to $15 an hour and step it in over time uh, to, make, uh, to make sure that people could adjust as we went forward. Governor and Johnson. then we should tie it to the cost of living so that it's permanent. I think we should raise it to $75 an hour. Why stop at 15 when we could go directly to 75 because and be no the one richest should, state in the entire Because country? no one should have to work full time and live in poverty. $75 an hour, that's not poverty. Martin, hey, that's, that, that is prosperity. Let's raise it to 75. I mean, Come on, let's if, just If we want to take a all, pure libertarian approach, we can get Jessica, rid of I just the 40 hour work week. Is we need we to raise children the minimum work in the wage. Children, that, when, you, when, you, when you start talking about the minimum wage. opportunity to respond, should we raise the federal minimum wage? What we're looking at today yes or is no. that just start easy off with the answer is no, we shouldn't raise it. Take a look at Southeast New Mexico. The economy is booming down there, and I was just down there the other day. They're telling me and McDonald's are paying 20-something an hour to work at McDonald's. Why? Because the economy is booming. Senator Heinrich's policies for economics has crushed our state. 
and it's been brutal. And so what, instead of enacting policies to grow the economy, he's, he, if he had his way, it'd kill the oil and gas industry. He has enacted measures that have made it difficult to do business in New Mexico, Just and that's why it's important that he that. wants yep. a higher minimum wage. Senator Heinrich. One, I opened foreign markets to oil and gas from New Mexico. Oh, that's not true. Two, you wrote, two, you wrote so, a, not a letter this. to the two, editor that two, said in there that was put around I, the state that markets. said Let's that you were against I streamlined opening the, markets. The permits on public land, but I will tell you what I won't do. I don't work for oil and gas. I work with oil and gas. And when they pollute our communities and when they think that they can leak methane with impunity, I will stand up to them. And that is exactly what I have done. With that, we're going to move on. Nine states have now legalized marijuana. It's a safe bet more will be doing so. But before we get to the question of legalizing marijuana or decriminalizing it, a quick question. Have you ever smoked pot? We'll start with Governor Johnson, which we all know your answer. But do you still smoke pot? Uh, I do occasionally, yes. Uh, and yes, we should legalize marijuana. And in 1999, and we'll get to I that advocated. in just a moment. All right. We'll come back right. to it. Mr. Rich, have you ever smoked pot? Man, when I talked about we need to yes let our young. No. Oh, come on. Yeah, I guess when I talked about. Yes. Senator you Heinrich have? should apologize to students. Wow. When they go there and was, said, hey, have yes? you done something wrong was that a yes? or did something wrong that you shouldn't be able to have a bright future? Nick, was that the a yes? answer Rich, is, was that a yes? have you ever smoked pot? Yes. Oh, good. Sure. Wow. Senator Martin. Yes. Heinrich. Uh, when when yeah. were the last times that Martin smoked and when was the last you time? You want to talk about it? Um, it'd be hard to remember the last time. I don't do it well, today. Wait. Okay. Mr. Rich, do you want to talk about it? You remember. <laughs> so, is it too long ago or it was just too out of touch? Should, no, just, should, should, you know, should when, be, you, when you become an adult and you have kids, you try to set a different example. Okay, you know we're what? It move was on to a talk long, a little bit more about this ago, issue. And it was a long and time ago. Mr. I think Rich it falls will get in you, line with you in just a moment. As we mentioned, nine states have legalized the recreational use of marijuana. Medical marijuana is legal in 30 states. Here in Albuquerque, pot has been decriminalized. It's a $25 fine for possessing up to an ounce. It's now legal in Canada. Should the federal government decriminalize or even legalize the recreational use of marijuana? And we start with you, Mr. Rich. No, okay. I'm against it. Senator Heinrich. Yes. It should be left to the states, and there are actually three issues um, that I would press for as a U.S. Senator. One would be to deschedule marijuana as a class one narcotic, allowing for research and development that currently doesn't take place, and address the banking issues in the states where it is legal. Another issue is drug testing. Currently, drug testing does not test for impairment. It simply tests for the presence of THC. So the government needs to establish impairment. Thousands of people are losing their jobs unfairly. And then lastly, there are probably 10 million plus Americans who, have, uh, who are now convicted felons because of our marijuana laws. One of the great untold stories of the of, uh, prohibition repeal of alcohol uh, was with pardons issued for those people convicted of those crimes. Jessica, we, we need, need to, to Jessica, issue pardons for that group of people who have been excluded uh, from the opportunities that this country has because of their convictions on marijuana. Jessica, I, the reason I'm against legalizing recreational marijuana, looking at Colorado, after it was legalized, the spike in uh, driving under the influence has gone up dramatically. My it daughter, who is a it PA hasn't. as well as a it med hasn't. student, did her emergency, uh, emergency room rotation in uh, Denver. All the she statistics saw the overdoses due to marijuana. Marijuana <laughs> overdoses, wow. And she Jessica. saw that, wow. and it was, and Not she said it was. Death. Due to marijuana, not and one Martin, documented and death. What, due Gary to Johnson, and we're Gary let Johnson Mr. said that we should. I do yeah. think that the governor raises an important issue, which is criminal justice reform. And if someone's issue is addiction, uh, they should get treatment, not incarceration. And if someone's only crime is possession of cannabis, they do not belong in the criminal justice system. Okay, with that, we're going to move on. 
Earlier this year, President Trump signed into law the budget that increased military spending to $716 billion, which is up about 15 percent from just a couple years ago. A Gallup poll shows Americans are split on how much the U.S. spends on its military. Does the United, spend, United States spend too much, too little, or just enough on its military? And we start with Mr. Heinrich. I think there are always places that we can cut. Um, you know, a great example from a couple of years ago was uh, the second F-35 engine, which was duplicative and incredibly wasteful and monumentally expensive. Uh, that is one of the reasons why I've worked with people like John McCain, who really led the charge on acquisition reform to save us dollars within our Department of Defense. Uh, that said, I am very proud of the work that I have done to safeguard our missions and bases here. I have brought over a billion dollars of new infrastructure into the state, allowing us to attract new missions, and I've worked very hard to grow the jobs at our state's national labs. I at take, Sandia, I take at exception Los Alamos. to that. I Literally take over 3,000 new Martin jobs Heinrich at was Sandia in Washington, D.C. when Since we lost I was our F-22s. To the okay, Mr. Rich? Martin Heinrich was in Washington, D.C. when we lost our F-22s. He was in Washington when our F-16s were taken from our Air National Guard. We are the, have the only Air National Guard without airplanes. Martin Heinrich was in Washington when Los Alamos is looking to move the leadership role for the uh, nuclear deterrence from Los Alamos to uh, Savannah River. But he was the one that Jessica. caught me by surprise was that he celebrated the loss in the last debate on the German Air Force leaving Holloman Air Force Base. You may not be aware of it, but when the German, so or the German sausage factory closed in Albuquerque, it was a result of the German Air Force leaving Holloman. It cost us jobs here. Jessica, it cost that's jobs just not in accurate. Alamogordo. I'm interrupt right and now. Martin Heinrich, I you have Mr. cost Heinrich, us I, jobs. Mr. Heinrich, I will let you respond in a moment. Okay. Governor Johnson. Well, uh, I, I think it's misrepresentative that uh, anyone uh, elected to the U.S. Senate isn't going to bring home the bacon when it comes to the military in New Mexico. Uh, when I was governor of New Mexico, the BRAC Commission, the Base Realignment and Closure Commission, slated to New Mexico to lose military assets. Well, I oversaw BRAC. I should have as governor of, the New, of New Mexico. But what came out of that process is we actually picked up assets for the following reasons. Equipment doesn't rust in New Mexico. We have the ground to conduct any m uh, ground maneuvers that the military might want to conduct. And then we have the most restricted airspace of any of the lower 48 states, and we have the only supersonic corridor in the lower 48. So yes, we need to cut the military. We need to end our foreign military involvements. Congress needs to take back the authority to declare war, which they gave to the president after 9-11. It's an abdication of responsibility. Stop with the military uh, engagements. I had an open door after four policy as governor of New Mexico. If I am elected to the U.S. Senate, I will have an open door after four policy in New Mexico, and I will have an open door after four policy governor, in Washington, D.C. for waste, governor fraud, Johnson, and abuse. I'm going to interrupt you and if there, you don't think that would be entertaining, to the topic here. Senator uh, that, Heinrich, that would involve like a lot of waste, fraud, what, and abuse within the military. What Mick said was just simply not true. I was neither the congressman nor the senator for Holloman Air Force Base when those F-22s left. But I was the senator for the state of New Mexico when we bedded down four squadrons of new F-16s, two that are permanent and two that we are actively bedding down now. So We also doubled the RPA mission, the remotely piloted aircraft mission at Holloman Air Force Base. We brought a new mission, the Missile Defense uh, uh, Squadron to White Sands Missile Range. I saved the small satellite mission at Kirtland Air Force Base, and now we are growing that as gang. So, 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 so if the I'm picture elected, he painted I'm elected is Senator, absolutely. I will come I'm up. I'm going to stop you no, here, I, I gotta gentlemen. point this out. This is big. Holloman is slated to become the largest F-16 base in the world. Not thanks to you, F because you didn't say a word when we were actually trying to bring those F-16s well, to Jessica, Holloman. You came out I and propose, wrote a letter to the I editor that you're to opposed the F to the expansion of the airspace that I'm would allow Florida. that to happen. I'm heard back to New Mexico. The airspace okay, gentlemen, we're going to stop there. Just not where Everyone's you point has been not made. Not over the Gila gentlemen, Wilderness where they're wanting Governor to Governor Johnson, it. we're going to move on to the next question. This has been a pretty civil campaign compared to what we've seen <laughs> we've been seeing in other races around the state let me ask you would new mexico be in good hands 
if either of your opponents win. And we'll start with Senator Heinrich. There are things that I respect uh, enormously about each of my opponents. Uh, former Governor Gary Johnson is an amazing athlete, and that doesn't happen without uh, uh, an enormous effort. Uh, Mick Thank Rich is, kind of he, is a patriot who believes strongly in the history of this country uh, and, and is a World War II aficionado. But I think there are deep differences between all three of us. And certainly on issues of protecting Medicare and protecting Social Security, those divisions run deep. And I think that either of my opponents would move in a, a direction that would be very right. problematic for our state. All right. Thank you, Senator. Governor. If either one of them get elected, it'll be status quo. Nothing will change. Um, that's just the way it is. Uh, if you're satisfied with the way things are uh, in this country right now, uh, elect either one of them. If you're not satisfied, uh, as a libertarian independent, uh, arguably I might be the swing vote uh, in the U.S. Senate, and uh, I'm going to say things that aren't being said, and it starts with uh, upholding the United States Constitution. It starts okay. with balancing the federal budget. And because Governor, if we we'll, don't we'll do give that, you the opportunity to talk more about your campaign. Mr. Rich. If I thought Senator Heinrich was doing a great job, I wouldn't be running for the United States Senate. Since he's been in Washington, we lost missions at Holloman Air Force Base, as I mentioned, and the others. Our state has been struggling. We have one of the highest unemployment rates in the nation and one of the lowest millennials per capita. While Senator Heinrich focuses on more wilderness, we don't have a wilderness problem, we have a job problem. I'm going to Washington, D.C. to stand up and for Mr. New Mexico. Rich, we will also give you the opportunity to talk about your campaign points as we are now nearing the finish line here. We'd like to offer each of you a minute and a half to make a final case to our viewers. By virtue of a coin toss, Mr. Rich will go first, followed by Senator Martin Heinrich and then former Governor Gary Johnson. Mr. Rich, your final thoughts. Thank you very much, and I appreciate you listening, the viewers, to listen in this evening. What you heard is three very different visions for New Mexico. My vision is to put New Mexico first, with good paying jobs, ensuring our labs and bases have the right mission, supporting our energy industry, and making sure that those tax cuts become permanent. We need safe communities, and what we have now today isn't. We need to ensure that we secure the border, make sure that make sure that we secure the border. I am the only candidate willing to secure the border. Right now, we have open borders that are bringing drugs into our country, fueling the crime epidemic. And lastly, I'll focus on education. That's critical. We need to get the federal government out of the classroom and let teachers teach, and we need to provide vocational educational training. Martin Heinrich. His vision is Washington's vision for New Mexico. He has abandoned New Mexico when he moved his family to Washington, D.C. and became just another Washington politician. He is, you know, he is looking at, as he just said tonight, looking at raising our taxes again. This is an individual that isn't working. I am running to be your U.S. Senator and nobody else's. I appreciate your support, and a vote for Gary Johnson is just like voting for Martin Heinrich. Thank you. Senator Heinrich. Jessica, my priorities are New Mexico's priorities. Building an economy that actually works for all of us instead of just a select few. Uh, protecting the gains that we have made in our health care. Keeping our promises to our veterans and making college more affordable for every working family. In the Senate, I have worked hard to make New Mexico a better place. I have grown thousands of new jobs at Sandia and Los Alamos National Laboratories, and I've worked hard to make us a leader in clean energy, attracting billions of dollars of investment in our communities, especially our rural communities. And I have voted repeatedly to protect our health care, especially our rural hospitals and clinics, from devastating cuts to Medicare and Medicaid. And I will always, always protect Social Security. The last six years have been an enorm enormous honor for me to be able to represent the people of this great state in the United States Senate. If my priorities are your priorities, I would ask for your vote again this November the 6th. Thank you, Senator.
Governor Johnson. I can't believe this went by so quickly. Thank you. Um, if you're satisfied with what's happening uh, in Washington today, then vote for either of my opponents. If I'm elected, uh, I'm not going to be accountable to the Democrat Party. I'm not going to be accountable to the Republican Party. Uh, I'm going to be accountable to the citizens of New Mexico. And I hope I'm not speaking um, like I don't know anything, having been governor of New Mexico uh, for eight years. I think that uh, I hope what people saw was honesty, uh, integrity, um, a transparent decision-making process, and respect for everybody in the process. Uh, in that context, when I ran for president of the United States, um, I was uh, pointed out as having created more jobs than any other presidential candidate running for office. My response to that then was the same as it was when I was governor. I didn't create one single job in New Mexico. The private sector creates jobs, but you can create an equal environment for everybody to thrive under. Crony capitalism is alive and well. When it comes to spending, it doesn't seem to matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. They're both spending like drunken sailors. Uh, back to young people. Um, this is very short-term thinking that's occurring in Washington right now. It needs to be long-term. We need to protect the future, and protecting the future is making sure that everybody does have an equal opportunity at the freedom that this system, that this country can and should provide. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Jessica, thank you. Really Jessica, good job. Thanks. Thank you. We will end it there. Thank you, everyone, for watching KRQE News 13 Senate Debate. A big thank you again to our candidates for their time and thoughts this evening. Election Day is Tuesday, November 6th. Be sure to vote from your local, local election headquarters here at KRQE News 13. Have a great night.